have to say, I've noticed something. The proposition that Xbox is going to make so much more money with its games on PlayStation than PlayStation can even make with its own proprietary games is one that really does break a lot of narratives. Because at the end of the day, all this talk about, you know, exclusivity and all that being dead, you know, is really bringing to light what I think is, you know, just a lot of different conversations at the end of the day. One of my audience members put a really long missive here that we're going to take into account and we're going to break down. I hope you're ready. Now, this is in regard to me talking about PlayStation's own IPs selling quite low on PlayStation. But I think my argument may have been misconstrued, and I'll make it here in this particular video. Audience member of mine said, I still think you're underestimating the revenue the, a platform generates. Even if your hypothesis were correct that PlayStation players don't buy games, which isn't true, and I never made that hypothesis. In fact, I need to correct the record and set the record straight. I have said, and I'm on record saying, that PlayStation is exclusive compared to the other company that does exclusives in terms of sales is abysmal. Astro Cyborg uh, is one of the channel um, supporters that clips a lot of content from other PlayStation fans across the board where they're talking about Xbox console sales, right? And I've shown you some of his videos, but one thing a lot of people don't really realize is when you look at the PlayStation exclusives, their percentage of sales compared to the number of PlayStation consoles is quite raw. Some games are doing 6%, some are doing 2%. Not many are even touching the 10% mark. Whereas Nintendo is literally pushing out so many copies of any of its IPs, and those IPs are made with less investment than these PlayStation games on average. So PlayStation players, compared to Nintendo players, don't buy their own PlayStation exclusives. So the narrative about PlayStation exclusives being this great thing is broken. It's not in existence anywhere. And that's what my argument is. So my argument must be put in the context that it's made so that it doesn't go out there and sound crazy. Because again, that's how PlayStation players are running around saying Xbox players don't buy games. Yet PlayStation was blocking games from going to Xbox, which then also destroys that narrative. But that's a whole different video for a different day. I wanted to make sure we set the record straight. So you said this. The numbers still prove that PlayStation brings in significant revenue. Let's break it down. Consider the average casual gamer from a live service demographic, someone who primarily plays titles like GTA V, Apex Legends, Fortnite, Call of Duty, and Marvel Rivals. He wants to buy a console, but isn't interested in a PC. Either G2 because it's more expensive, it's not. Because it's too complicated, it's not. And he's a couch gamer, can couch game on PC. So again, these are misconceptions that sometimes I see. People will say this, you know, oh, it's too complicated, it's too expensive. That's not true. That's what they say on the internet, but that's not reality because people can say stuff and I can, we can easily run in there and bring numbers, right? Then you said, when choosing between an Xbox and PlayStation, he's likely to pick a PlayStation, especially if he enjoys franchises like Spider-Man. But I thought you said he's a live service casual gamer. So his enjoyment is not going to be a game like Spider-Man by any stretch. This is exactly what we're trying to basically paint a picture of. When, when the news leaked in around 2021, it was known that a, a million people exclusively played Call of Duty on PlayStation. They didn't play anything else. They spent 100% of their time playing it. And the percentages of people who play maybe 50, 60, 70, 80% shows that many of these people are not so interested in these exclusives. And we can prove it by the sales and those sales percentages being low on the PlayStation ecosystem compared to Nintendo where Nintendo players are exclusively buying the Nintendo console for its exclusives to play them, judging by the high numbers of sales of these Nintendo exclusives. The data does not support your narrative that I can see anyways. You see that? You said PlayStation offers strong premium exclusives, a trend that would only grow with potential future releases like Horizon and possibly even Halo on the platform. I think you may have inadvertently exposed PlayStation. You just said PlayStation offers a strong line of exclusives, but you didn't mention any PlayStation exclusives that are coming. Instead, you mentioned two Xbox games. Ouch. I think you may have just burned PlayStation. PlayStation offers a strong line of exclusives, which would also increase in trend by the time, boom, two Xbox games, one which is announced, the other one which is basically still a fantasy, releases. So you mean to tell me, even if I gave you this argument, that these so-called players that you said 
may be interested in live service games, then you said perhaps you may be interested in some of these other exclusives, will be looking forward to Xbox games? This is the fundamental challenge with Xbox's ecosystem right now and PlayStation's ecosystem is that for some strange reason, everybody wants to act like we're not so aware of the business track when it's right here in front of us. <laughs> so you said he finishes Marvel Spider-Man in about 50 hours. Doesn't take that long to finish. I've beaten Spider-Man games. I don't think they take that long to finish, even 100%, within the first month and then spends the rest of the year around 300 hours playing live service games. This aligns with Matt Piscatella's monthly data and a 5 to 1 sales ratio between PlayStation and Xbox. 5 to 1? When did we get 5 to 1, guys? I thought it was basically 3 to 1. 70 million to 30 million. Is that 5 to 1? Okay, maybe it is 5 to 1. You said, now here's where the revenue comes in. Sony takes a 30% cut from games purchases on Fortnite, Marvel Rivals, Apex Legends, Call of Duty, and GTA 5, all of which have massive user bases on PlayStation. This means Sony benefits from the earnings of five different publishers. So, in contrast, Xbox is losing market share on console and can no longer rely on this model. Well, you also forget that based on Matt Piscatella's data, Xbox also gains this same revenue share from these same games that you just pointed, including 70% of Call of Duty and 70% of Overwatch and 70% of Forza on other platforms while gaining 100% on their own platform. 100 is greater than 70 and 70 is greater than 30. You cannot try to convince reality that math is going to somewhat bend the wheel because somewhere, somehow, you believe that PlayStation is racking up all of these 30% you know, revenue share from these games, while Xbox is also raking these 30% revenue shares and then 70% on PlayStation for Call of Duty and Overwatch and other games and 100% on its own platform. You can't run the numbers to support your claim. PlayStation can't make more money than Xbox on these live service games. It's just not there. Just because they have all of these particular, you know, numbers of gamers. But Xbox has the games in terms of the live service games and have the higher revenue share. So you said on PC, many of these live service games operate through their own platforms like EA's launcher, limiting Microsoft's ability to take a similar cut but they are on Xbox. Y'all would make conclusions about Xbox and jump past their 30 million users and jump to PC. Xbox barely operates on PC. Like th their PC platform is a joke. Like compared to even Epic Games, it's a joke. If it wasn't for Game Pass, nobody would be touching that thing. This is where the fundamental problem is. Just because you want to calculate a 30% share for Sony, you've now abandoned the reality of Xbox's business. That's why they're going to win, because you are basically sleeping on their strategy. And PlayStation slept on their strategy this long that inside of the boardrooms, when it finally came out, they realized that their pillars were dated and behind the competition. And even though the fanboys may be running around saying a different story, the executives inside of the offices understand that this thing is a very different paradigm. Even if right now, think about it, Xbox has 10 live service games, I think 12, sorry, 12 live service games are going to be going on PlayStation once Age of Empires and Age of Mythology make their way there. If these games all do 10 million in, you know, sales or in revenue, PlayStation takes, you know, 30 million of them, 30, 30, they take, uh, you know, 30 million after all is said and done, 30%. Xbox still gets $70 million of revenue from PlayStation. Then they get 100% revenue from Xbox on their console. Then they get 100% revenue on Xbox on PC. Then they get 70% of revenue from Steam. How can 30% that PlayStation is going to get, get even close to that? Then when you even look at the other games that are hosted on the Xbox platform, they get 30% as well from Fortnite and all these other games. You have to look at the totals. You have to look at everything. Even though PlayStation may be racking up all this revenue, their single-player games are eating so much money, their expenses are so high, that at the end of the day, their business doesn't even look profitable because they basically extended themselves so heavily. And while they were doing all that, they were depending on Call of Duty. But now Xbox has the biggest market share of the biggest game every year.
there is no inroads for PlayStation unless they make a big live service hit that would then basically resonate on their console and across the board. And I think Marathon is the play for them. But Marathon is going to have to fight a really heavy battle. And it would need Xbox to make that final hurdle into where it gets successful. I'm sorry, man. But there's no way you can chalk this up. It's going to be hard to convince numbers that this is actually a win for PlayStation over Xbox. It's a win for them that they get 30%. Nobody's saying that. But it does not make sense because, again, 100% beats 70% and 70% beats 30 And if you can get 70 from multiple sources and 100 from your own source, are you kidding me? While PlayStation is getting only 30 and 30 from other sources? <laughs> They only need to sell 5 million more consoles. That's all Xbox needs to sell. PlayStation would need to push way more consoles than it already has. And I'm talking even into the hundreds of, into 100 million plus. But Xbox has an ecosystem that is just so wild. Subscription service with another 5 more million console units or 5 more million Game Pass subscribers? Sorry. But Xbox has already blazed past PlayStation and how it makes money. I don't think PlayStation can ever catch up. Minimal gains for Xbox will translate into way more money than even what PlayStation can do with even tens of millions of console sales. Because most of those consoles are going to just be bought to play Call of Duty. Crazy, I know. But think about it. Peace out.